Hi everyone, welcome back to Asperger's from the inside. You're here with Paul. I make weekly videos sharing the human side of autism, so make sure you hit subscribe to get the latest content. So uh, today's patron's choice video is autism and loneliness, coping strategies and advice. So this was a, a very popular topic um, as, as voted by our um, Patreon community. And so to tackle this topic, it's, it's really big. And I thought I would start with a little bit of a discussion around um, what loneliness feels like and some of the challenges that we can face and things that we've probably already tried. Um, and then I'll get into some really specific things that you can do to try to change the situation um, and to, to feel better about the whole thing. So um, some of the feedback um, that, that I hear from the community all the time, and I totally relate to this, is that when you're feeling down, when you're feeling lonely, when you're lacking energy and you need other people the most, it can be in those moments that it is the hardest to reach out. Um, some, some people find that just forming words in general is really difficult when you're really tired and when you, when you need, when you need other people. So, um, social anxiety can play a big role. I need other people, but I'm worried about rejection, right? My, one of my first videos was called rejection is the story of my life. When I reach out to someone else, what I'm looking for, the opposite of loneliness is connection. I'm looking for connection and if I don't find connection, it feels like rejection. And that is a really scary concept. So the, the whole prospect of trying to reach out to somebody when I need it the most to find that connection is very vulnerable because what if they don't understand? What if my bid for connection is rejected? What if I miss, yeah, I'm misunderstood because my communication is not in a way that someone else can actually understand uh, what I'm trying to say or what I actually want? Or what if what I actually want is not something that is, is common? So it's um, most people think that when you want social contact or social company, then that means talking all the time. For me, I don't often, I don't want to talk. I just want to be around other people and to feel like I'm part of the group and that they care about me. And I don't necessarily want to do a lot of talking. I don't necessarily want people to talk to me. I just want to feel like I'm part of the group. So that's just one example. And it's hard for people to, to know what I want because it feels like, well, I'm not talking back, therefore I probably want to be left alone. And actually that's the opposite. What I would like is to be included, even though I'm not in a state where I can actually talk at the moment. So, um, there's a, so um, as some of you know, I, I do life coaching. Um, uh, and one of the, the key thoughts around um, changing a situation is, is to accept what's happening now completely and utterly accept the reality of what's happening now and imagine and work towards a different situation in the future. So when I'm alone, one of the temptations is to focus on how crap it is that I'm alone and I don't have somewhere to be, I don't have someone to talk to, I don't have something to do, I wish, I wish, I wish, I wish. Um, there is absolutely nothing I can do in the millisecond of when I'm feeling that to change my situation. My reality is what it is in that particular situation. So um, it's much more helpful to accept, I am home alone tonight. If I accept that as a constraint to my reality, what can I do to have the best time that I possibly can within those constraints, I'm by myself, but I can still potentially do something that I enjoy. So what could I do? And, and then um, the, the separate question is, what am I going to do to try to ensure that 
what I want in the future is more likely to happen. So um, where do I want? There's so there was so much. I was brainstorming so many different so many different things here. Um, it comes back to that the opposite of loneliness is connection. Some people say that simply reading the stories of other people uh, can help to feel connected to to the wider to the wider community to humanity in general. So um, that might be reading stories uh, of of other autistic people that that you relate to. Um, it could be just recognizing that if you're feeling lonely, you're never alone in your loneliness because it's it's such a common thing that so many of us feel from time to time that if you're feeling lonely, you can guarantee there are lots and lots of other people out there also feeling lonely. So sometimes um, we can connect uh, to others in that way. Um, there's also an, uh, an interesting uh, exercise uh, that, that some coaches use called, called the wheel of life, which basically looks at, if you imagine a wheel, it has to be round so that it can roll, right? And if it's, if it's um, pointy in any one direction or there's a, there's a divot in it, then it's, gonna, it's not going to roll very well. So we imagine our life as a wheel and it's got different spokes and one might be family, one might be relationships, one might be your spirituality or your job or your hobbies, or your self-care, or your mental health, physical health, right? And we need all of these things to be, to be functioning so that, so that our life can, can roll along in a, in a really helpful way. So if loneliness is one aspect that is, not, that, that is not really working in your life right now, it's likely that there will also be other things that, that you might um, also uh, like to work on. So why do I mention that? Because if we focus too much on one thing, <laughs> hands up if you're guilty about focusing too much on one thing from time to time, I know I am, then what happens is we end up letting the other things go in the background, focusing on, on this one thing. So um, in term, I'm sort of transitioning into, into strategies now. In terms of um, focusing on, on a solution to, to slowly feeling better, um, uh, over time, we can spend some time thinking about how we feel, thinking about loneliness, thinking about, you know, actually sitting in that feeling of that uncomfortableness and that desire to connect with other people. But if we stay too much in that, then that doesn't actually, it doesn't actually do anything or accomplish anything. So we can uh, sit in the moment for a while, but at the same time, we can also say, okay, well, that's enough. I'm going to go out and distract myself and do something. And, and that could be, it could be volunteering. It could be joining a club. It could be um, socializing, even though you don't really feel like it. It could be deliberately spending time alone. It could be doing some hobbies. It could be some doing some self-care. Um, and you can see that by, by keeping busy, in a sense, uh, I know this. This really works for me because when I'm physically doing something, when I'm when I'm occupying my mind and my body, exercise is another really good one. Then I don't have time <laughs> to feel lonely. Now, I the the opposite extreme is to always be busy, right? Workaholism, for example, is is one. Um, unhealthy adaption to try and deal with negative feelings. I'm just going to keep busy and then the negative feelings never come up. We need to keep a balance from an emotional intelligence perspective. Emotions always have a meaning and a message for us that we need to hear. So by, uh, by keeping that balance, I keep busy, I keep doing things, and then I d dedicate some time to sitting by myself, reflecting on how I feel, reflecting on, on, on the loneliness. Um, <clears throat> so uh, another strategy is to make a list of things that you enjoy doing, that you could do to get yourself out of, uh, out of that feeling. So, so that, again, that, that might be going for a walk. It might be your favorite hobby. It might be taking a bath or cooking or cleaning or 
going to see a movie, whatever, whatever you enjoy doing by yourself. Um, sometimes when you're in that spot, it's really hard to think. I know for myself, I just, my brain just goes, it just doesn't, it just goes offline. And if I've, ha- if I've got that list in advance, then it's like I'm planning in advance to when this happens, do this. When I'm feeling like this, bring out the list and just read it through and see if anything uh, sparks that I, w- that I would like to do. Um, similarly, when we want to act on something, um, it can help to have a plan in advance, right? So if we want something from another person, it can help to tell them in advance. Otherwise, we risk miscommunicating and, and, and being misunderstood and feeding that cycle of feeling misunderstood and rejected and disconnected when, when we want the opposite. We want to feel understood and connected. So if you're the type of person where your communication suffers when you're not feeling well, right? I know I definitely feel like that. Then it helps to communicate in advance. Tell people in advance what you need them to do under certain circumstances. So for example, I could say, I need a break right now. I would like to be in this room and not talk to anyone for 10 minutes or an hour or the rest of the night. And then I would like you to come and check on me. I'm gonna go to my room and shut the door and I would like you to come and check on me in an hour. That will give me the alone time I need and it will make me feel like you care about me because you're checking on me. So that's just a, that's just an example. But if you have a think about what is it that you actually want other people to do for you or with you, then it becomes possible to start planting those seeds and asking people for what you actually need. Another common thing that I hear is that nobody can help me. Um, I'm alone, but no one, no one knows what to do to make me feel better. And I have no doubt that that's true. But if we find what are the things that we would like someone else to do, then we can start training them almost for lack of a better word. People, I've received this feedback a lot from people who care about me. They want to help and they don't know how to help. And then from my perspective, I end up telling them they can't help and they hear the message, they can't help. And then they give up and they stop trying to help. So the opposite of that is encouraging people to actually act on the care that they have for you in a way that is actually helpful. So it might be helpful to be invited to the pub or a social event that you have no intention of going to just so that they know, just so that you know that they're thinking about you, for example. So I might tell my friends, I know that you know that I'm never going to accept your invitation, but just tell me anyway, it helps me to feel included, for example. So especially with, um, with, with groups, um, even when then, sorry, Let me backtrack a little bit. When someone is trying to help you and they're not getting it right, it's important to give them positive feedback for trying so that they try again. Otherwise, what people end up doing is resigning themselves to the fact that they can't help you and there's no point in trying. So positive encouragement thanks for the call, I appreciated it, or thanks for trying to cheer me up even though it didn't work i really appreciate it gives people the the motivation to keep trying to and then the other person or the or the other group is trying to connect with you as well and if we remember that loneliness is the opposite of connection if connect connection needs two people to 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 connect if it's always up to me to try and connect and the other person's not doing anything, that's setting myself up for failure because I'm, I'm not gonna be able to do all of the work myself. Similarly, 
if I'm closed off like a rock, no one is going to be able to connect with me. We need, I need to reach out and the other person also needs to be trying to reach out, which means encouraging others to continue to try and reach out is, is, it can be really helpful. Um, there's so, there's so much that I, that I could go through. Um, pets are another, are another great strategy. Um, they help us to feel connected to life, to, to other, other living creatures. So if you're a pet person, um, and this doesn't, you might not even have your own pet. You might go for a walk in the park and, you know, say hello to the, to the, to the other, you know, other people walking their dogs or something like that. So I think I should, I should probably, I should probably wrap up. I've got so many things that I, that I could say. I've, I think I've said most of them. Feedback that I get from, from a lot of people is that traditional advice doesn't work, right? This is, this is something that we experience as autistic people. Traditional advice doesn't work. Great. What does work? I'll ask you, what does work for you in the past? When have you felt connected? What are some activities that you've really enjoyed? What, who are some people that you've really connected with? So we can think what, what has happened in the past? What do we want to do in the present? And then we can imagine if you could remove all constraints of reality and just think, I'm going to create for myself, I'm going to write my own story and it's going to happen. What would it, what would it look like? Who, who would you meet? What would you do? How would you feel connected? And by, by kind of trying to imagine what that would look like, it helps us to actually get there in reality. Because the next question is that reality that you've just imagined of this perfectly connected, look, I've got friends, I'm going out on a Wednesday night to play Pokemon or something. I don't know, whatever, whatever would make you feel connected how close is that to my reality and how can I, how can I step there? And the next step to ask is who am I in that situation? I've just described being connected, but I don't feel connected at the moment. Chances are you have to, to work towards becoming the person that you want to be in that future scenario. And that's, that's part of the self-growth mindset um, of coaching that you can probably see, you can probably see come through right now. Um, okay. I, I think I have covered most of what I wanted to say about this. You can see me just perusing my notes a little bit. Ah, okay. One final thing. Loneliness is one thing. Depression is another thing. They can feel like each other sometimes. Um, if you are not feeling connected, if you are not feeling motivated to do anything, if um, things that would normally make you feel good don't seem to make you feel good, that could be depression, which is something a little bit separate to loneliness. Loneliness is almost just what happens when we don't feel connected. Depression is a bit more um, serious in, in the sense that it, it can still be a cycle and we can go through cycles of depression, but what we need to get out of a depression can be a little bit more, more serious um, than, than simply something to reach out and, and get connection. So um, I would encourage you to consider, do I need to think about how, to, how I can take care of myself through depression as well, if, if that's something that, that um, might be the case for you. And that might include um, seeking professional help as well. Um, we don't do that enough. <laughs> um, connect, we can find connection in lots of places and help in lots of places and, and professional help can definitely um, play a role in that. I'm actually going to be doing a series on mental health coming up soon that I'm, I'm really excited about just in the, in the planning stages. Um, and cause one of the questions I get is how can I find good professional help and 
how do I manage my own mental and emotional health? So I'll be doing a series on that um, shortly. Um, but otherwise, I think I should leave it there. Thanks again to um, everyone in our Patreon community for, for voting for this video. If you'd like to be uh, have your say in next month's uh, Patron's Choice video, you can become a cup of coffee supporter of this channel for less than a dollar a week. So I strongly encourage you to consider that option if you're able. Otherwise, um, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, oh, best of luck making connections. It's something that we all need. And don't be afraid, final piece of advice, don't be, I say final and then I think of another thing. Uh, final piece, second last piece of advice is to allow yourself to connect in the way that you need to connect rather than thinking that it has to be in, a, in, in, in the way that others connect. So my final, definitely final this time, piece of advice is talk to other autistic people, read the stories of other autistic people, meet other people on the spectrum. Um, Asperger's from the inside through our Facebook page, we have a, an online social group that is a great way to meet others on the spectrum, to, to connect with others with a similar experience and connection is the cure for loneliness. So I'd uh, encourage you to check that out um, if you're looking to, to connect with more people. Um, and I'll definitely leave it there this time. Um, so thanks for watching and I'll see you again next week.